I'm Vaughn Koo. I'm an assistant professor of emergency medicine at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia. And I'll be speaking about uh, how to do a focused cardiac ultrasound examination. This lecture will provide an overview on how to perform a focus cardiac ultrasound. I will not be describing how to do a complete echocardiogram as performed by cardiologists, and I want to stress that a focused cardiac exam should not be a substitute for a complete one. The focused cardiac ultrasound is a two-dimensional uh, transthoracic examination that involves imaging the heart in the four views represented here. Um, at the end of this lecture, you'll be able to identify these views and uh, be able to um, learn the technique in order to uh, perform them. The purpose of the uh, focused cardiac ultrasound examination is to help the clinician evaluate a patient presenting with cardiac trauma, hypotension, chest pain, uh, dyspnea, and uh, pulses uh, electrical activity in the emergent setting. Uh, those of us who evaluate and treat uh, patients, patients in the emergent setting uh, know it can be difficult to obtain a complete cardiac ultrasound performed by an echocardiologist in a timely manner. The American Society of Echocardiography recognized the need for a focused cardiac examination. In 2010, the Society and the American College of Emergency Physicians published a consensus statement describing the use of a focused exam. Uh, the primary goals of a focused cardiac uh, exam are to determine whether or not there is a pericardial uh, effusion and to assess global uh, systolic function. I will be focusing on these two for this lecture. The other goals are to assess for uh, intravascular volume and to help with procedures that include pericardiocentesis and transvenous pacing. It's important to recognize the limitations of a focused cardiac ultrasound it will not assess for valvular pathologies, masses, thrombuses, wall motion abnormalities, and is unable to reliably rule out uh, aortic dissection or endocarditis. But with experience, you might be able to make some of these diagnoses as well. So in order to image the heart in three orthogonal views, four basic transducer planes will be obtained a four-chambered subcostal or subxiphoid view, the peristonal long and short axis, and the apical four-chamber view. Because the heart uh, is surrounded by air-filled lungs, air interferes with the transmission of ultrasound waves, there are only a few windows that allow us to peek into the heart. With the exception of the subcostal view, the ideal patient positioning is in a left lateral decubitus position with the head of the bed elevated to about 20 to 30 degrees. You want to use the uh, phased array probe. It has frequencies ranging from 2 to 5 megahertz. Its compact shape enables it to easily fit into the intercostal spaces. Uh, it would be very difficult to perform a cardiac ultrasound with the uh, curvilinear probe because it doesn't allow you to get in between the rib spaces. Most ultrasound machines have cardiac presets that optimize frequencies and tissue harmonics for imaging the heart. So a lot of people get confused by where the screen marker should be located. For abdominal and pelvic exams, the indicator is usually on the left-hand side of the screen, but for echocardiographers, the standard is to have the indicator on the right side of the screen. It's important to recognize this because flipping the screen indicator will flip your cardiac image. Let's start off with the subcost of view. This is uh, the view normally used as part of the uh, FAST exam in the assessment of trauma patients. The subcost of view allows for visu visualization of all four chambers. Here's the liver, the left ventricle, right ventricle, left atrium, and the right atrium. The ultrasound beam will be perpendicular to the interventricular and interatrial septa. This view is especially helpful in looking at the heart in a barrel-chested patients because the other views may be difficult to obtain. Again, here's the liver, the left ventricle, right ventricle, left atrium, and right atrium.
the ideal patient um, positioning is in um, the supine position. And in order to obtain the subcostal view, you will use the liver as an acoustic window. It's important to remember to keep the probe angle uh, shallow to the body. A common problem with novices is to hold a probe too perpendicular. Keep the probe marker pointed to the patient's left. Now let's discuss the uh, parasternal long axis. Personally, I think this is the uh, easiest view to obtain. Uh, you want to place the probe perpendicular to the chest wall in either the third or fourth intercostal space left of the sternum. For this view, you want to keep the probe uh, perpendicular as opposed to a subcostal view where uh, we kept the angle low to the chest. And point the probe marker to the patient's right shoulder Better views can be obtained if you keep the patient um, towards his or her left side. You want to rotate the probe so that the aortic and mitral valves are in the same plane. And for this view, you'll be able to visualize the left ventricle, uh, the right ventricle, uh, interventricular septum, mitral valve, and aortic outflow tract. Next view would be the parasonal short axis. So once you have the probe in the parasonal long axis, the short axis is literally just a twist away. The um, parasonal short axis allows you to look at the heart in cross sections. This will result in three distinct parasternal views. Going from the base to the apex of the heart, you will come to the levels of the aortic valve, the mitral valve, and the papillary muscles. In order to obtain the parasonal short view, simply rotate the probe about 90 degrees counterclockwise from where you had it in the parasonal long position. The probe marker will now point to the left shoulder instead of the right. Then you can sweep across the heart from the base to the apex in order to obtain cross-sectional views of the heart at the levels of the aortic valve, mitral valve, and papillary muscles. This clip shows the parasonal short axis at the level of the papillary muscles here and going to the mitral, mitral valve. And you can see here the parasonal short axis at the level of the aortic valve, and this is also known as the Mercedes-Benz sign. Now we'll get to the apical four chamber, which will be our last cardiac view. And the apical four chamber will allow you to visualize both ventricles, the atria, and the atrioventricular valves. The apical four chamber view provides a coronal view of the heart, and you'll be able to visualize the septal, apical, and lateral walls of the left ventricle. There's a right ventricle, the left atrium, and the right atrium. I find the four chamber view uh, is actually the most difficult to obtain but with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to um, perform it with ease. You want to place the probe in the fifth intercostal space, usually near a point of maximal impulse. Aim the probe towards the right shoulder with the probe marker to the left. And patient positioning really helps in this view. You want to try to put the patient uh, towards his or her left side. And here's a clip of the four chamber view with the left ventricle, right ventricle, left atrium, and right atrium being demonstrated. With experience, it's possible to determine gross left ventricular function just by visual estimation. Calculating an ejection fraction in a full cardiac ultrasound is complicated. It involves measurements of the left ventricular cavity dimension and wall thickness. It's really beyond the scope of a focused cardiac exam. Uh, but it has been shown that uh, in, the, in the literature that a gross ejection fraction estimation can be accurately obtained. Here are two clips. One is demonstrating a normal ejection fraction. And this is, uh, these are both in a parasternal short axis. And this clip demonstrates a heart with an ejection fraction less than 
So for a review, here's a liver, the left ventricle, right ventricle, left atrium, right atrium. And this is the subcostal or the subxiphoid view. Here's the left ventricle and the right ventricle. And this is the personal short axis. We have the left ventricle here, the right ventricle, left atrium, and right atrium. And this is the apical four chamber view. Again, here's the left ventricle, right ventricle, left atrium, and the aortic outflow tract. And this is the peristernal long axis. So when performing um, cardiac exam, if you're having trouble obtaining uh, correct images, keep these questions in mind. Is the patient in the correct position? Oftentimes, uh, you will obtain a better image if you place the patient in his or her uh, left side and with the head of the bed elevated to about 20 to 30 degrees. Ask yourself, is the transducer in the correct position? Try sliding the transducer under and over the ribs in order to obtain a better acoustic window. Are my images rotated? Your transducer may be in the correct place, but the probe marker is not. And if your images don't appear crisp, make sure you are on the cardiac presets on your ultrasound machine and not in the abdominal presets.